Solo Utah. This is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your host, Joseph DeGaulier, your host, and Kate Schweiz. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I'm your host, Caleb Schweiss. And I am Joseph DeGaulier. And today we will be doing another Spotlight episode. Uh, I haven't done one in a while. It's very true. Uh, we've been talking about wanting to do one on Naboo, but we have this great idea of bringing in musical pieces, so we'll yeah. get to that later. Yeah, and the thread I put up for that yeah, yeah kind of died. So It's true. That's kind of disappointing, huh? Yeah. That's right, I've got plenty of time at work. Maybe I'll uh, go through and find some <laughs> uh, more obscure ones from the older games. I'm sure your uh, employer will love that. Oh, I bet you they will. Oh, yeah. So yeah, today's will be on Nasir Gabelli, a programmer for Square Enix. And uh, yeah, we'll be getting to that a little later. But uh, first up, well, even before that... Even before what? Even before we talk about where we are on 13. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Follow us on Twitter. It's at UFF Podcast. Like our wonderful Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ultima Final Fantasy. Uh, support us on Patreon. We've had a nice uh, nice influx of people, and we're going to be... We're going to be looking into programming a new site. We recently hit another one of our goals for that, and uh, we're kind of looking at uh, what to do with that. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, here's here's the first thing I found. On our WordPress.com site, there is a thing that allows us to take our site and put it onto a private server using WordPress.org. That service costs $179 just to move the site to okay. a privately hosted thing where we can manipulate the site much more. Oh, that's a good That's good uh, progress then. So 179 bucks. All right. So we it, once we can move it over, I mean we can look into uh, different WordPress plugins like my own site josephdegolier.com um, where I could in fact if I like figured out how to use all the tools, I could uh, do everything that we want to do um, using the WordPress and tools and all the other stuff but it has to be hosted on something else it can't be hosted on wordpress.com which is very blog centric right yeah. all right so we're looking to doing that but yeah we just barely hit that goal and we're going to be moving forward on that and then also follow us on twitch um i'm usually playing final fantasy 13 i will be for the rest of the month got a lot of grinding and uh how's that going fun stuff to do pretty well for me uh but yeah that's twitch.tv slash Ultima Final Fantasy, and you can find all of this and much more at ultimafinalfantasy.com, and join our forums as well. Ultimafinalfantasy.com for the next couple of months might be down every once in a while. Yeah, we'll see what we're going to be doing. But ultimafinalfantasy.boards.net shall be open until we close it. <laughs> yeah, and we'll try to find a way and we'll to let you know. carry over the levels. Cause I, I don't think we can. We can't carry over the post. That's I don't impossible. think we can carry anything over. Ah, oh, damn. I'm, well, I'm afraid, because uh, we're using boards.net. Yeah. I don't think they have a plugin that I can put into another website privately. I don't think so either. Most of the time with forum-based things, they're pretty much gone. But, but I know uh, with the, the, with the DreamHost stuff that I have for josephdegolia.com, I can do that. So I might just mess with my own site to see what I can do to the Final Fantasy site and then move it over. All right, fair enough. So uh, speaking of Final Fantasy... Where are you in 13? Well, I just asked you where you were in 13. Well, I'm asking you. Okay, so I don't want to talk about this. This is... <laughs> is this painful this for you? This is painful. Too yes. soon, even? So for a month and a half now, I have been attempting my best and have been looking forward to the Platinum that I wish to earn in Final Fantasy 13. Okay. Unfortunately, that has now been made completely impossible. That ship has sailed, so to speak. The ship has sailed. Or sold, <sighs> as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what happened. This is the dumbest thing. No, probably not the dumbest thing. I'm not sure what that would be. But it's definitely one of the dumbest things I've done in the Final Fantasy games. 
I thought that the lore master trophy was only for weapons. And I had been told that the platinum for 13 was not missable. In other words, every single item you could get, no right. matter what. Right? True. <laughs> Unless. Unless. <laughs> Now, I only thought it was for weapons, right? So I took one day out, like a few, I don't know how many days ago that was, like maybe a week ago. And I was leveling up all of Lightning's weapons to their tier two status. Uh huh. And I was leveling up, I was trying to level up one of them to tier three, but of course that cost tons of gill. Yeah. <sighs> Gil is hard to come by in Final Fantasy XIII. The only way you can really get Gil, with the exception of occasionally finding a thousand Gil in a in a treasure chest, you have to sell the little items that you get at the end of battles, and uh, mostly that's just the upgrading parts, the stuff that you know helps you upgrade the weapons. But there's only a couple that are really useful, so it's kind of like get the sturdy bones, get the superconductor, sell all the rest, right? Yeah, I suppose. And I did that. But, of course, I was getting impatient with the amount of gill I was getting. And I'm like, I don't want to go get the other stuff. Blah, blah, blah. And then I saw this giant page of accessories. Where each accessory was selling for at least 1,000 gill. And so I sold... I, I, I optimized all my characters. And I said, fuck the accessories. And I sold them all. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I sold every single accessory and didn't blink an eye and kept playing the game, including saving over whatever my previous oh, file was. Man, we are notorious about that. By now, <laughs> enter two days ago. Some viewers on Twitch actually probably heard me in the background cursing. Um... <clears throat> Two days ago, right before class, I was I was in this classroom where we have a bunch of computers, and I was just waiting around, and I was thinking, okay, I really have to get this platinum stuff done. I'm going to look at a guide real quick and just overview it and come up with a game plan. Okay. And <laughs> I was looking through, and I read the lore master uh, <laughs> the description dis- yeah. that said, uh, not only do you have to upgrade all the weapons and have to have every weapon in your inventory at least once uh which i did well not really but i did all the way up to tier two for okay for lightning at least and that stuff i was ready for the other thing was you had to have every single accessory also not just weapons but accessories <laughs> and so i had sold a shit ton of accessories and then, uh, and I was like, oh, I was like smacking myself in the head. And then, then I kept on reading. And then it said, you cannot sell your accessories. Most of them you can get back except for the elemental rings. Uh-huh. Most especially the aqua ring, uh, which has screwed some people out of a platinum. That's what the poster put. And I was like, oh, no. And so I looked up information on the Aqua Ring. You can take it from another extremely rare r- ring called the Riptide Ring. And I have no idea if I had the Riptide Ring or not. Um, <laughs> I got one yesterday. You did? Yeah, while we were streaming. <laughs> and one of the guys that was watching was like, LOL, don't tell Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it was in a chest, though. So I was like, oh, dude. I might have probably gotten gone. It. I might have gotten it if it was in a treasure chest. I yeah, mean, it was like on the way to Grand Pulse and that weird area with all those little uh, uh, fish-like dudes and there's a ton of treasure. Uh, I probably got it. Yeah, I wasn't able to kill everything there, so I, I didn't get it till later. I don't but. know, but I probably <laughs> got it. It's most especially Aqua Ring, but I guess the other elemental rings are extremely hard to get to. And uh, and I was like, oh, please tell me when I get to Caleb's place to go play Final Fantasy XIII, I will have the Aqua Ring. And I got here, and there was nothing. <laughs> there was no <laughs> elemental ring of any kind. So whether or not I have a 5% chance of uh, being able to get the Aqua Ring back does not matter, because getting all those accessories back... 
It's going to cost me hours and hours and hours of gameplay time. I am not willing to put into the game. So I am sorry. I am ashamed. <laughs> I want to commit Harakiri <laughs> <laughs> because of the shame that I feel. And I will do it without a second. Uh, All right. Just because of that. So. I would have been there. I am <laughs> ready to chop off my, my head. My show now. <laughs> <laughs> just like super sexy. Yeah. Um, just like super sexy. Which we only had two uh, two comments of protest on. Really? I um, didn't even see any. There were some on the Facebook. Oh. And to you guys, I say, uh, I'm going to say exactly what I said on super sexy. I'm sorry. It's yep. just my time to leave, Super Sexy. Lots of failures all around for Joe. So, so uh, yeah, this week was uh, Joe Disappointment Week. So, my next step is just to... Uh, I am under-leveled, as I said before. Maybe level up a little bit and then go kill Orphan. Yeah? Are you going to try to get the other trophies, or are you just not even going to worry about it? If I ever want to get the trophies again, I have to replay the game again. True, you could get I all have to replay the one. game anyway. If I were to want to do that. So yeah. I'm not going to worry about it. I did a lot of the hunts. Might do a few more while I level up. And uh, I'll set up my 14 account when I'm done playing 13. <laughs> All right. So you might get a little bit of a head start. Uh, I might. You, yeah, maybe. I yes. will uh, at least try to get on the server, which is Brynhildr. Yeah, Brynhildr is where we're going to be playing. Join us on the Brynhildr server on Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, so uh, my thirteen has been going much better. I, I don't think I've sold anything that's absolutely necessary, and if I have, it's uh, from earlier in the game, so it's mostly little bangles and stuff like that that I'm fairly certain I could buy again. Um, last night I just got the last of the, the level cap trophies for the specific classes, so I maxed out at least one character in each of them. And I think I've got, I'm getting close to, I want to say half of the hunts, maybe a little more than half of the hunts done, and only three or four of them I haven't five-starred yet. I just got to the, uh, did you ever do the trials before? What do you mean? The, uh, oh, what is that guy's name? The big, the big red dude on the planet. Is it like Gaia or something like that? I can't remember what his name is. He's got, there's like a, a trial set up. It's almost like a playoff system in sports. You know, you have like the first round, the second round, and then it expands. Okay. They're all, uh, they're all hunts. And they're all in this one area, and you get to choose which one you go to next. It's like. No, I haven't done those. It's prime. I haven't done those set of. And I'm ashamed for not remembering what the guy's name is. It's like on the tip of my tongue. But uh, yeah, anyway, there's the big giant dude that eats one of the uh, deals, one of the adamantoys when you get there. Yeah, nothing. He's Nothing's got, coming to mind, so this is all trials. new. Yeah, and it's really cool. There's like 20 or so of them in there, and uh, you get to the point where you can choose one of three, and so I'm going to go through and hammer those out, and uh, once you complete all of those, you can then take on the final Titans, Titans Trials. That's what it is. Thank you, Gabrant, on the uh, stream. Uh, once you take those out, I can go fight the 64th Hunt, and that's when you get the Golden Watch, which... Uh, reduces it either reduces the amount of time or adds I think it adds time to your battle uh, timer to get five stars so once I get that okay yeah that's awesome yeah I'm just going to kind of blow through the ones I'm in not worry too much about five star in them even though I already have been uh, but from now on I'm going to just blow through them and then go do that one and then come back and finish them up because right. I'm kind of getting I'm getting up there in levels. I mean, it's going to take a while longer to well, max once everything you, out. But once you max everything out, I mean, it should be a cakewalk, most of those hunts. Yeah. To five-star. They w would be, yeah. And I mean, even some of them, I've been five-starring anyway, so. Have you just been adamantoid grinding? I've been adamantoid grinding in between hunts. So, okay. like, when so I get the... Uh, mix it up a little bit. Yeah. When I get the three, uh, the three TP or whatever it is to do the summon... Okay. That's when I go and fight an Adamant Toys, and then I kind of go off and do a few more of the, uh, few more of the hunts, just to kind of gain the the points, to do the summon, and then do the summon trick where you knock over the Adamant Toys and dispel them and uh, cast death on them until he dies, and that's a great way to get sixty thousand uh, CP. It's amazing, but it's still gonna take forever. <laughs> did you uh, did you look through and see exactly how many more? CP you need? Um, no, I still have like zeros on some of my early classes. 
Oh. Yeah, I've got to max out the whole thing. Ooh. Yes. And you went, you went and beat the game finally and then went back, right? I did, yeah. I went and beat the game. I got. I think I got a three-star in Orphan, the final form. He's. Uh, it's fast. It was a really fast fight. I was like, oh, yeah, I five-starred that. And then I get out, and I was like, jeez. Is it going to be like a minute? <laughs> but, uh, I, I five-starred him the first time, as I said before. Nice. And, of course, my game time was like 62 hours, so I must have been doing a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I was at 52, I think. Of course, I remember... I would always max up all my stuff at the end of each chapter. Like oh, so you'd the stay and chapter. grind for... Yeah. That's a good idea, actually. I used to do that. <laughs> you used to be grindy, huh? Well, the first time I played FF13, but this time around, I mean, I got through the story stuff so quickly. I mean, it was 30, 32 hours, and I got to uh, got to the main guy because I just skipped all the hunts. <laughs> yeah. I grinded for a few hours on Pulse and was strong enough to get through chapter um, chapter 12 just fine. Chapter 13 is another story. Chapter 13 is sick. <laughs> yeah. So. But, uh, yeah. So I'm, I've am i got uh, a couple more weeks to do the Platinum, so I've really got to crack down and uh, and hit it up. But I, I think I could probably do it. I just need to not do anything else, not see anybody, just kind of sit in front of the computer <laughs> and play 13. <laughs> So that's what the listeners want you to do. It's true. I'm on Twitch, guys. Come, uh, come, hang out. Please, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, give me something. <laughs> I need human connection, even if it's via text box. That works, right? Yeah. <laughs> if it works, it works. Shall we get to the news, Schweiss? Um. Uh, yeah, we'll get to some news. 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 All right, so we had quite a bit of news coming out of the Tokyo Game Show, and uh, so we're going to go over a couple of those. Uh, Whoops. (laughs) Okay. Don't worry about that. (laughs) We got a couple of worthless tabs that are... uh, It's for the Twitch. That are bugging me. Okay, so we got a new Final Fantasy XIV uh, Tokyo Game Show trailer, and we're going to play a few seconds of that right now just to kind of bask in its Japanese and uh, glory because I can't understand a single thing and there's no subtitles of this video. But it does look cool. Looks like uh, some 14 stuff is uh, it's coming and it's action packed. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a very like, different game. It's like a hippogriff thing with a weird face. Uh. <laughs> Dragon just got pwned. Yeah. Chick falling from the sky, calmly speaking. Yeah, that was something <laughs> I laughed about earlier. Yeah. Shiva, crystals. Nice. Shiva looks good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, fun Sweet. stuff for those Final Fantasy fourteen fans. Uh, I'm not Aww. sure what information has been revealed in that trailer, but uh, I'm sure we'll find out some more in the next coming weeks. This one makes me sad. This one makes you sad, but you never did anything with this thing. <laughs> Final Fantasy 7 G bike is to end service in December, so I guess it just wasn't that successful. Lasted just over e- just over a year. Wow. Wow. Let's so, see. Uh, Although we were pushing forward with uh, discussions until now, we've come to a conclusion that from here it will be difficult to provide a service that will satisfy our users. To, so today we have decided to end service. So Final Fantasy 7 G bike, a complete and utter failure. So, if you want to review the uh, <laughs> the G bike, do the it now. Mobile game, it's uh, it's time. Yeah. And speaking of mobile games, we do have a trailer for that. Remember that Final Fantasy XI uh, thing where they were gonna put out extra Final Fantasy XI games? Yeah, on the uh, the little mobile one. Yeah, some mobile FF11 uh, type games. We got one here for Final Fantasy uh, XI Grandmasters. Um, I can't really say much about this trailer. It's just kind of a just kind of an iPhone trailer with a uh, with some stills with still images. There is some video later on of airships and warriors fighting a behemoth getting and pwned. getting their ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure they Dude. I'm sure they win in the end. Oh, yeah. naturally. So, Final Fantasy 11 Grandmasters. It's, uh, yeah. it's coming to a phone near you, Japanese people. Uh, <laughs> World of Final Fantasy uh, TGS 2015 trailer. Now, this is the chibi-styled um, kind of fun little Final Fantasy game. Final Fantasy, uh, what would you say earlier, adventure? 
No, no, no. World of Final Fantasy. Yeah, but this one's the uh, the remake of... No, it's not. Which one's the one that you were talking That's about? That's Final Fantasy Adventure we talked about last week. We announced that there was a Final Fantasy Adventure. Oh, it's a oh, okay. It's a remake of one the of the other mana one. games. And uh, right, right. Okay, I got you. It's just a remake. There's of way that. too many of these random ones. Something of ones. Final Fantasy. Yeah. Something, something. Final <laughs> Fantasy. Final Fantasy blank, blank. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, watch a few seconds of this trailer. This one's really weird. Um, it has lightning and cloud. I think. Is that who this is supposed to be? I don't. Oh, that is. That's lightning. See? Okay. That's lightning. She's standing before a mirror that, or a mirage. And I guess they go through the mirage. <laughs> this lightning doesn't act like lightning at all. Oh, maybe she finally, uh. Maybe she finally got some by the end. <laughs> A little more calm. I guess we'll find out uh, when we finish the 13 trilogy later on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just the chibi characters going through uh, random environments and. <laughs> Psychopath Cactar. He's the conductor on the. <laughs> on the train. On the train. I hope he has like a German voice in the American version. Vows the tickets. So yeah, a little cutesy PS4 game that. Uh, Looks I'm good, not, I guess. Uh, Graphically. I'm not that excited for it, but... Oh, you don't want the adorable little chibis running around? <sighs> I don't Stick. understand chibi. I mean, we were all here when I found out what chibi was, and... Uh, you weren't not, impressed? I'm not that impressed by chibi. Um, <laughs> well, it's better. It's a step up from the overweightness of the Final Fantasy three guys in our version that we played with their pot bellies. And oh, the pot bellies and the uh, peg legs? Peg legs, yeah. yeah. They're looking for the white whale. Much to Gammon Stark's dismay. <laughs> he wants the peg leg six. Uh, so any of you guys who were hearing the uh, rumors of Kingdom Hearts HD uh, 2.8, Final Chapter Prologue, it is coming to the PS4 system, and there's a new trailer out for that. But, you know, there's so much news here, I'm going to kind of skip around with that. This is something I was really surprised by. Uh, Final Fantasy Aguido Plus, um, which... I kind of thought was going to come to the States, but I guess not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for the PS Vita has been canceled, and there is they gave no reason why. Wow. Final Fantasy Aguido Plus has been canceled. It looks like me and you, Schweiss, shall never play an Aguido game. <sighs> Insert disappointed sound here. <laughs> you know, that was supposed to be, a, what was it, same universe as Type-0? Uh, it's, it's like a sequel. It's like a remake of Aguido, and it's like... A, a game oh, was yeah, like yeah, a yeah. prequel or sequel to the type series. I don't know. It gets really confusing. Yeah, we had a big argument with Caleb Craig one time about it, and he got super mad. <sighs> okay. We were totally right. <laughs> so another smartphone game, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, uh, got a new trailer, and uh, looks like it's got some artwork by Amano. Ooh. And the three new characters are Rain, Laswell, and Fina. And if you want to look at the trailer, of course, it's up. Some text. text. I think we do get to see some gameplay here, though. It looks like uh, classic Final Fantasy gameplay, just, you know, a little bit more dazzling. Oh, yeah. Some crystal. So. Oh, wow, he's moving fast. Oh, yeah. He's got a run function. Oh, thank God. <laughs> we haven't had those in a few, in a few games. Yeah, just the standard movement. Cool, I suppose. Yeah. So that looks good, I think. Yeah, it doesn't look bad for uh, mobile. And, of course, our last piece of news, and Schweiss has not seen this trailer. Nope. This will be brand new to him. There has been a new Final Fantasy XV Dawn 2.0 trailer All released. Right. And uh, it's just a, it's just another story trailer like we got last time where it just takes a little glimpse of what happened in the past and, uh, and uh, brings it forward Ooh. to us. I'm excited. Square Enix, of course. Fifteen years ago. All right, got some guys in armor with guns. Is that Luna Freya? I think that's her name, right? Uh, it's something like that, yeah. So, bad flashbacks to some night that was horrible. Whoa. <laughs> Which looks extra rapey here. Either suggested violence or suggested rape. Um, it's pretty dark. <laughs> yeah. 
Noctis being all <clears throat> Noctisy. Leading up against a car there. Good old dramatic rain. Not some more hug. Okay. Yeah. The kid <laughs> hugging his father. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's what we need. Hug two. Yeah, the game looks amazing. And it looks like it's not just remembering that night. Oh, oh and uh, their journey began from there, I guess. Oh. Oh, so here's the big thing. It's coming up right after uh, Luna Freya sweeps the soldiers away and walks forward. Here it is. Come on. Come on. I know you're coming. Come on. There it is. Coming 2016, huh? Yep. <laughs> Fuck. Fucking jeez. <laughs> and we missed that by what? Like <laughs> a week? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was your... That was your uh that was your guess. It was late twenty sixteen. Yeah, I was thinking worldwide holiday. But you know, sometimes that you know Well twenty sixteen for at least the Japanese version. Ooh. Get some uh, it's slayer. It's, it's not guaranteeing whether or not uh it's the US be release will US be. release. So True. You know, I don't actually want me to be right, because the earlier it is the better, but I still feel like that's that's the You think it's gonna be holiday for it? Yeah. They're going to finally do one at I the think, same time. I think you're probably right. But if I'm right, I'll be happy. Well, in, we'll in one sense. We'll get a few more spin-off games in before we hit the play 15. That's it's true. Not a, it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, it, depending on where we're at in the spin-off <laughs> games, of course. <laughs> if we're in knee-deep in Crystal Chronicles, who knows? I have not seen, played, really heard anything about those. So that that's going to be fresh ground for me. Also, I need to buy the ones on Wii before the Wii thing goes away. <laughs> The Wii thing? Yeah, the the ones on Wii. The, the I don't Wii, know if it's the Wii store. Yeah, I don't know if it's going away for Wii or anything, but Ooh. the Wii is last gen. I don't want to miss that crap. I don't want to get a freaking Wii U just to play these two uh, Final Fantasy games. So we get we need to hit those up. Oh, we do. Yeah. Poor we forget. Yeah, poor we forget. Yeah. Poor we forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Schweiss. Um. Shall we move on to uh, talking about little Nasir? Yeah, let's talk about Nasir. Ugh. Oh, we got one person on. So much for announcements. Well, we got more, but one person speaking. Old Gabranth. Early shoe great show. Okay. <laughs> 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 I was like, I got some new shoes, but there's no way you're seeing that. The shoe was right on time. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make sure my levels are uh, right with yours twice. Give me one second, guys. I don't sound as loud as Schweiss in my headphones, but you know, maybe it's just because it's his voice. Is everybody doing good tonight? I'm gonna need to get some more coffee too. Whew! Early episodes are rough. Let's see. Master of Puppets shirt? Yes. Love Metallica. My heart is Metallica's heart. I'm glad you're doing awesome. <laughs> I don't know what to do without Schweiss here. I don't know if I like talk to you. How do I talk to you guys? Schweiss is the one that does all the Twitch stuff. Uh, what? Caleb says he's the entertainer, whatever that means. <laughs> oh, man. Just waiting for Schweiss to get out of the bathroom. <laughs> All right, I'm about to come back and find out what dickish comment you made. I didn't make any dickish comment. <laughs> oh, after I said that. I just repeated <laughs> what you said for them. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is where we are from, as per our introduction. And uh, yeah, Provo. Decent place. Crime's low, economy's fantastic. And uh, yeah. Can't really say about the podcast uh, market in Provo, but you know, 
doesn't really it doesn't really fucking matter where you do it it's just uh, gotta be done um i don't have google fiber i've got fiber internet it's not nearly as fast but it's yeah, it's kind of there. I think Google ended up buying the place that uh, that mine's through, but for some reason it still sucks. I'm not sure why, but I feel like I remember reading that they bought Veracity, which is who I go through, and so I guess technically yes, I should have it, but it's uh, it leaves it leaves some to be desired. So I'm getting up to like 60 or 70 down and like 100 up, which is you know it's still good, but. It's not uh, phenomenal. There will be no touching of the boners. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's under 81. Yeah. Um, I might play some FF13 after this, but we're doing the podcast right now, so this is the uh, this is the primary. <laughs> the primary. Speaking of primaries, oh. Better not get political. <laughs> Why do they do this so early, though? Like, I don't know. It's crazy. We got forever till the election. They just start so far out. Uh, how many hunts do I have left? I think I'm about halfway. I uh, I got to the the Titan challenges, and I'm gonna go back and power through the rest of those, and then do the last hunt, and then come back and just five star the rest. And hopefully by then I'll have most of the XP stuff taken care of. But I mean I'm gonna have to grind for those uh, for those items, the trapezagata, whatever the fuck it is, to get the ultimate edition of the weapons unlocked. Mm. So still got a ways, but so the Final Fantasy mobile game we were talking about it could have been Grandmasters, it could have been Brave Exvius. I don't know. <laughs> There's a few of them. If you want to go on our forums, there's a new submission area and a whole list of stuff that a guy named Shinru put up. Yep. Mm, okay. Shall we uh, get to our discussion? Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Let me adjust this shit again. Okay. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Wait. 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 I'm I don't know why you have to wait for the video. It's constantly rolling. I'm Nazir Gabelli. Is that Gilles. how you pronounce his name? I don't know. He's Persian, <laughs> so. Oh, is he Persian? Well, his name is Persian, but he's uh, Iranian. Wow, I was wrong last night. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> I thought he was Italian or Japanese. Like, no, he was an Italian name or something. So uh, he is the <sighs> sole wrong. programmer for Final Fantasy one through three, as we know. Right, and uh, which is an amazing feat considering how large those games are. True, yeah. Um, and he was born in uh, what did I just say? Iran. Yeah, he was born in Iran, and he moved to the United States to to program. I mean, he wanted to come to school. How old was he? Do you know? I, I didn't actually say. Not very old, I would assume, because he's not too old now. They're all really young when they first got into Square. So okay, but uh, yeah, so he was a programmer for Square Enix who was part of the Dream Team or the A-Team as Square calls it <laughs> along with Nibu Uematsu, Yoshitaka Amano and the Gooch himself to create Final Fantasy but as expected that is not the first project that Nasir took on at Square or was it his first project period. Okay. Uh, so in 1980 he started a company after uh, after graduating from uh, studying computer science in the u.s in the u.s yes 
He just he started a company called Sirius Software with a guy named Jerry Jewell. That's an amazing name. Yeah, it's Jerry. It's if classic. you're out there, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while Gabelli or Jabelli or Gabela, whatever his name is, we'll call him Gabelli. Gabelli. That's what we've been, we've been calling him for forever. Right. While he was within Sirius, he made a ton of strides. I mean, he was kind of he was really making a name for himself. Uh, he was creating advanced graphics for the Apple II, which we know is not super advanced. And he actually his very first project was a program called Easy Draw, which was a logo and character creation program that he ended up using later in his career to create uh, images for his games. Okay. And he began uh, within uh, within Sirius, he began developing a reputation for being a really quick programmer. He would there was even one year where he <laughs> came out with a game once a month. It was twelve games in what? one year. Yeah, and I mean we're talking. Do we have access to any of these games now? Or are they all just really like the old computer games? They're old, old. This is nineteen eighties, <laughs> like early eighties. Early eighties. Yeah. Ooh. So uh, one of these games, it's called uh, Gorgo. Ended up selling like 23,000 copies, which made it one of the best-selling computer games in the early 80s. So he was doing he was doing really well, and this is all within... 23,000 copies? I gotta wonder how much... <laughs> like, that's not that many copies. That would be a complete failure now. Oh, yeah. That would be atrocious. Like, how much money did that make him? Like, how much did a computer game cost back then? Well, the company was worth... I think it was over... It was like $11 million in the 80s. And it made... Okay, so its biggest game was 23,000 copies. Yeah. Biggest video game. I mean, they, they're software, so they may have done other stuff. Yeah, but they saw, and they had other games, obviously. True, yeah. So uh, in 81, Gabelli ended up leaving Sirius to establish his own software company, appropriately named Gabelli Software. Mm-hmm. And he released a few successful games through this company, but by 1983, his games were becoming notoriously bad with... Uh, According to Soft Talk, which is a magazine that focused on mainly computers, but a little bit of uh, video games, and then also, so he was he outwork was he working himself to death and is just <sighs> pumping them out too much or yeah, what? like there were some of them that were they had like atrocious reviews and stuff. Like he just wasn't for some reason he wasn't producing anything worthwhile on his own. And then also the video game crash of 1983 would end up leaving his company in shambles, and he ended up closing his doors and of course the the video game crash there's a lot of things that led to it uh most of it was a flood of the market with like a ton of different home consoles like there wasn't the the I big know it three was, it was the atari and the the atari died around then didn't it yeah that's when the atari went out is during this uh thing because there were all these companies just throwing their uh their own consoles out there and then people doubted it's uh the longevity of any of the consoles because the strides that were being made with pcs at the time okay so, I mean, it's kind of an ongoing thing. Like, even That's, now, people are like... The PC versus console thing has been going on for years and years. Yeah, now. so, I mean, it, it, this is where it really <laughs> made a huge crunch on the market, and he ended up closing down his own uh, gaming company because of the huge crunch, so... Oh, good. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> great start there for this guy. So, after uh, Gabelli Software went belly up, Nasir did what any sensible businessman would do. He traveled the world for a few years. <laughs> he must have saved up some money while he <laughs> yeah. was there. He must have made some money, yeah. yeah. Uh, he would eventually resurface in 1986 when he went to visit a friend, uh, Doug Carlson, who owns Broderbund. Uh, this is the company that originally did the Carmen San Diego games. Wow, cool. Yeah, they also went out of business too. But well, yeah, eventually. Yeah, Carlston <laughs> uh, came to Gabelli and told him about the rising power of the NES. So this is kind of coming out of that drought. Right. I remember seeing on a documentary because I wasn't around back then, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember seeing on a documentary that they were talking about how the Famicom was a huge risk because of the failure of the Atari, and like they yeah. thought consoles were going out, and then of course. They did extremely well with the uh, original Nintendo. Oh, yeah. It's one of the best-selling consoles. So, yeah, uh, he told him about the NES and then suggested that he that he program for it because he's had, you know, programming experience mm -hmm. for consoles as it was. And he made a game a month at one point, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, why not? So, he was obviously interested and uh, ended up going on a nice bro road trip with old Doug to Japan where he would meet up with one of Doug's... I don't think they took a road... Oh, it was a fly trip. <laughs> <laughs> the Bering Strait is frozen over momentarily. Let's go. Yeah. It's a travel by map. <laughs> so uh, they went to Japan, and 
apparently this uh, this Dave Carlston guy knew some people at Nintendo and knew some people at Square. Square. I almost said Square Enix, but that would be wrong. So he went met up with Nintendo, and they ultimately weren't interested in what he had to offer, but Square, and especially the Gooch, <laughs> were aware of his reputation. For and you new guys out there, the Gooch is referring <laughs> to Hironobu Sakaguchi, yes. who, of course, created Final Fantasy. Right. He was very interested in Gabelli and what he would bring to the table, and uh, he eventually joined Square. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, the kind of the forming of that team that created Final Fantasy was basically what led to the separation of Square from the parent company, Denyusha. Denyusha, yeah. Okay. So uh, I didn't know that, and I did the write-up on the history screen. So yeah. Wasn't up there. So Gabelli's first game with Square would be 3D World Runner for the mm-hmm. NES. Uh, this was a forward-scrolling third-person action game, and it was one of the first stereoscopic 3D games, which kind of gives it, obviously, a more 3D feel. Yeah, no shit. When they, it was when they, <laughs> when Nintendo went really crazy with, like, the the little glove stuff and things along those lines that were kind of pretty cool, but at the same time... Well, eh. they were pushing the... the st- they were the definitely technology. they were definitely pushing it. You yeah. could tell where Nintendo was wanting to head when the Wii <laughs> came out, you know. So uh, he would then program Rad Racer and then its sequel later in 1990. Nice. So now now that he's got a few games under his belt, Gabelli, Sakaguchi, Uematsu, and Amano began to produce Final Fantasy. <laughs> which, of course, would be later released in 1987. Mm-hmm. Uh, it featured numerous unique features, such as the character creation system, classes, and obviously the ever-famous, way-better-than-the-old battle system, the side-by-side as opposed to the first-person. Oh, uh, first-person of Dragon Quest? Yeah, I, I hate the way it looks. Uh, so... Gabelli and this team, they didn't miss a single beat and went on to create Final Fantasy II a year later. Yeah, one day less than a year it was released, yeah, remember? Yeah, one day less than a year. Which, it was crazy. This guy, Gabelli, sole programmer, as far as we know, on these first three Final Fantasy games. Yeah. I'm wondering what his typing speed is. Like, how many <laughs> how many words per minute does this guy do? It's got to be not, crazy. It's not even like just typing out, you know words it's not typing yeah, it's out code. It's, it's not crap. typing out iranian or even english for this man it is code so it's like this guy is insanely he's quick on his hands oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah he was definitely part of the uh, got, pump him out he's got nimble fingers <laughs> whoa <laughs> so uh, i know yeah you and gabelli go back well you know he's got a lot of experience <laughs> Anyway, they created Final Fantasy II one day less than a year later. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this game, obviously, as we've discussed, they have a lot more in the the way of uh, storyline and, you know, the tragedy behind the game. You feel a little more for the characters. Yeah, it's kind of of more in-depth story than FF1. Right, and that's why we ranked it above it. Um, And it also replaced the traditional leveling system that the first one brought us with the activity-based progression system, which would later go into influence the Saga, Grandia, FF4, and Elder Scrolls series. Now, much better later on. Uh, the, the, the copycats are much better? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it was poorly utilized. But it was very interesting. I mean, yeah. it kind of makes sense. You use the bow a lot, you get better with the bow. But the problem, <laughs> there's a lot of problems. But uh, So yeah, he you know programmed all of that in and... Final Fantasy II, if you remember, also had this innovative dialogue system where certain key words would be memorized oh, and you'd use them during conversations with the NPCs. I remember that now. That's uh, that's reaching back. It's kind of weird because like, no other game in the series thus far has really had anything like that. I no, mean, I mean... Maybe a little bit in 12. They'll and, highlight uh, specialized text, um, but no, nothing quite like FF2s. Yeah, it's, it's pretty different. Yeah. So then, of course... Following two, obviously, Final Fantasy III, which was released in 1990, and this game introduced the ever-beloved, almost perfect, job class system. <laughs> Not perfect. <laughs> Midway through the development of both Final Fantasy II and Final Fantasy III, Gabelli was forced to return to Sacramento, California, which we discussed in the reviews, due to an expired work visa, and uh, the rest of the staff followed him, and they finished up the game. So Did two he and three. become a citizen of the United States? 
Yeah, he's a citizen. Okay, I was like, if your work visa expired, you would go, okay. It's like he because <laughs> he he's from way. Iran, right? So he like he yeah, ha- okay, yeah, he's, he's got a- the work visa to go to Japan, and that must have been through the United States. So you wouldn't get a visa to get a visa. No, you that'd be madness. That. Okay, yeah, he's a uh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to make sure he's an American citizen. America. So yeah, the Final Fantasy two and three, both American games. Nice. <laughs> but uh, so. After the success of Final Fantasy III, Gabelli took another one of his awesome long breaks where he travels a ton. Apparently, he's really into that. And then he came back and began to work on Secret of Mana, which is the second game in the Mana series, and it was released in 1993. Uh, This game was more of an action role-playing game and included a really interesting co-op multiplayer mode. Uh, This game was initially going to be one of the launching titles on the SNES CD but was later altered to a cartridge due to the SNES CD being a, a dropped project. Okay. Uh, the game received critical acclaim, uh, mainly for its real-time battle system and that cooperative gameplay system where a second and a third player could c- kind of just join in and then drop out of the game whenever they want. And there was also customizable AI settings for computer-controlled allies. Dun, 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 dun. To which I say, Gambits! <laughs> Probably a very archaic and old school version of gambits but still so uh after secret of mana gabelli essentially retired from the royalties that he earned from square and as always he didn't retire from them he retired with them yeah yes he, yes he wasn't like <laughs> screw these royalties yeah he retired from and, and with i guess the royalties that he earned from the Square games he created and traveled all over the place because that's what he does. Uh, And apparently later he attempted uh, John Romero, who is the co-founder of id Software. Uh, He had an Apple II reunion in Dallas, and apparently Romero credited Gabelli as a major influence on his career. So who's Romero, for those who don't know? Romero is the co-founder of id, which obviously created uh, Doom and the Quake series and wolfenstein some of the very first uh, first person shooter video games i think the first 3d p- first person shooter was wolfenstein i believe you're right and then like quake was the first in a different way because it like drew the graphics differently yeah quake looks cool i don't know yeah there's there's cool stuff with it too <laughs> yeah it's pretty awesome they they're kind of like square except for they only release a game every very rarely yeah well, kinda, what's up with that oh there, there are some wolfenstein games coming out but I don't know. But yeah, uh, Gabelli still lives in Sacramento, and apparently he's still really good friends with uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi. Wow. So yeah, that so is... So that's, that's Gabelli. Yeah, that's Gabelli in a nutshell. <laughs> typist, programmer, man... In the world. In the, in the world. <laughs> Holy crap. He programmed... The, those are not small games, man. No, like, they're he not. He programmed those by himself. Especially 3. 3 is especially... That's insane impressive to me just because of the job system and all of the crap that went into that and plus two and three had a lot more you know they had a lot more free roam i mean one had it but it was a little more cut off because you'd have to get to a certain point to unlock certain areas but with two i could mm-hmm. go in areas i wouldn't would, call one linear because you could go in lots of areas well, that you're no, not supposed to be in yet i remember that a lot more with two though like i'd go too far to the west and then just get destroyed immediately i'm like well, what is this there were the i think two and one are similar on that front yeah but three definitely with the well there were a lot more added airship and i mean they made the battle system more complicated both in two and in three uh of course he made that that one mistake in final fantasy one where you can hit air yeah uh, which way is to annoying. go buddy yeah thanks <laughs> uh, <laughs> we didn't have to deal with that in our versions no thankfully. um there were also, you know, the the scenario setups, the story setups with the with the dialogue and everything, and the right. character movement. They got more and more complicated as it went along. Right. Yeah. And I mean, some of the stuff, even in FF One, is fairly impressive. He must be still getting royalties from FF One, like on the Android and shit. He's probably still getting paid. Yeah. That's insane. This guy's probably made for life. Oh man. Which makes me sad that like Good Sakaguchi stuff. and them Cha-ching. didn't get out before it went crazy. But. Eh, they're probably still getting something. I don't know. I'm assuming Hironobu's getting something still. Oh, he's got his own company, so definitely. Well, that too. With his spinoff Final Fantasy series, The Last Story or it's something It's not like a that. series, it's one game. <laughs> yeah, it, for now. It is funny <laughs> that it's like Final Fantasy means last and then fantasy is 
uh, some kind of story, you know? Yeah. Like <laughs> the last story is just another word for final in fantasy. You know? Yeah, it's true. That's funny. It's, it's funny uh, to me. It's really funny to me. So Okay, so we're going to do a segment. We haven't done a segment in a long time. Uh, we need to make up some new segments. Someone gave us the idea on our forum, and I'm not sure who to credit because I can't remember, honestly. Right yeah, now. I think it's Pixel for the FF16 thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think Where we should just do a kind of slightly humorous uh, small segment where we just come up with FF16 predi- predictions. You know, that's that'd be interesting to see how... Uh, See how close we are. That's something we should look yeah. into. That'd yeah. be fun. We, we, we should do that next So week. which one are we going to do then? Because I know we're going to oh, do questions. Oh, we're going to spot some Final Fantasy. It's called Spot the FF. It's number five on the uh, board. There you go. Oh. Okay, so our first spot, the FF, comes from a Toyota car commercial. You just had the tab open. Oh. There you go. Um, this one comes from Dope Throne, who didn't really post on our forum very much, but we thank you for this uh, spot, the FF. He says, saw this on the Reddit in the morning, didn't see it on the forums here, thought you guys may appreciate it. So let's, uh, let's watch this Toyota thing and see what it has to do with Final Fantasy. All right. So it's 2015. Wow. Okay, so it's the 2015 Toyota Aqua X Urban CM Japan, which is the Toyota Prius C, so you can look that up on YouTube. It's a bunch of yellow cars roaming over the hills. To the Chocobo theme. To the Chocobo theme. This is beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Nice, expansive. uh, Nice. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So close out of that thing before YouTube starts playing the next video. Um... So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I that's like awesome. That. that was that one was pretty fun. The uh, <laughs> I wonder. I guess they probably would have got permission. Uh, yeah, they got, as they we definitely as got we, permission to use that music. As we discussed, though, the Choco Bow was taken from the Choco Ball, which still disturbs me to this day. Choco Ball. I get a good laugh about it whenever I think about it. That Choco Ball commercial and how disturbing it was to me. Right. So, yeah, thanks for that submission. That was yeah, good. Thank you. All right, this one comes from Batman. Um, who is a knight on the round? Knight of the round on the forum, by the oh, way. Oh, nice. Um, now, I couldn't find video for this, so we won't be able to hear audio or anything like that. I'm not sure if there would be audio for this game, frankly. But he says there's a Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney game. Uh, which is made by Capcom, not Square Enix, where the counselor is using an unusual metaphor for the judge. The counselor tells the judge that uh, that a character um, that a character is words. Words are the milk, and you're the spoon. Uh, the judge responds by saying, "I'm a spoon. I'm no spoony bard. I'll have you know." <laughs> um, nice. And Batman says here, unless Spoonie Bards are popular in Japan, I believe this is a reference to FF4, which it totally is. Yeah, that was not j- in the Japanese version. That was uh, that was purely Ted Woolsey's uh, awesome, creation, yes. <laughs> and um, it could have been the creation of the translators for that game, and not necessarily the creation of the original guys in Capcom making that too. Yeah, true. Capcom's Japanese, right? They are, but they're. I think the Ace Attorney games are Japanese games. I don't know. So I'm assuming that it was the work of the translator that did that. Either way, awesome. Maybe it was Woolsey again. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> we should talk to him. Referencing my own yeah. games. All right, this one comes from Kafka Palaza, uh, who is also a Knight of the Round on the forum. Ooh, some competition there. Yeah, nice. uh, found another cool one on the Did You Know Gaming site. Uh, this game, I actually played and had no clue about this, but there's something I only imagine you can find if you were looking for it. So if you click that image there, it's from uh, Did You Know Gaming. It has a screenshot from Secrets of Evermore, right? Yes. Um, Apparently during a Colosseum fight, the main characters of Final Fantasy VI 
can be seen on the, in the stands from left to right. It's Locke, Mog, Realm, Strago, Terra, and Umaro. Nice. And we got a zoomed up image of it here, and it's it's totally them. Yeah, so uh, uh, they they are they are kind of sticking out of the background of uh, the Secrets of Evermore game. Yeah, they are. That's really cool. So make sure you guys check that out on the forum. It's pretty awesome stuff right there. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done the. Uh, the spot the FFs. Yeah, well, there's always FFs to spot, really. True, true. But uh, I think it's about time we moved on to some news. I think it's about time we moved on to some questions because we already did no. the news. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> questions, of course. You're not kidding. You put the mouse over the news thing and you thought news. I put it over there because I... Whatever, fine. Yeah, questions. I should be in charge of the panel. Screw you. Like I used to be. It was better. It's better now. <laughs> you just admitted it was better. Well, it was less confusing because the numbers are... It's not the numbers. I didn't care about the numbers. I read them. It's the numbers. I always had them pulled up so they would be there. Whatever. We're Let's doing get to this. the questions. We're doing this. Let's go. twice let's look at our first question there this was posted in the wrong part of the forum but we thought it was probably a question to us yeah uh this is from gil hodron who's a new forum member a warrior on the forum nice it's nice. good class for the first game all right so it says my first final fantasy was ff2 aka ff4 it's ff4 okay let's just settle this no need to say ff2 means ff4 yeah. It's just FF4. Get the two out of your head. Everybody who's listening to this podcast. <laughs> just just do it. It'll be better in it's the better long for run. for everybody. All right. <laughs> On the Super Nintendo when I was a kid. So naturally, I love Paladins and everything about them since. My question is, what is your favorite FF class slash job? And uh, what would you be in real life? Hmm. Well, my favorite job is going to have to be the Samurai from five because of guilt toss and how ridiculously overpowered it is okay which one would i want to be in real life <laughs> would though? you want to throw money at uh at things no throw money at problems yeah <laughs> no that doesn't work <laughs> uh i would probably i don't know i think it'd be really cool to be a black mage because the thing is is like if you had the ability to cast and you had magic i mean you could still work out and be nice and fit, but then you could just zap somebody or flame them or cast meteos from the sky. Are you just saying that out of you not wanting to work out? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying like as a black mage, I could still be physically strong, Oh, but I'd still be able to cast. So you like I could. could be if you leveled up a lot on the physically. Right, right. Physical stuff. But the black mage, I, I, I would love to cast meteo on somebody. Okay. What about you? What's your favorite? <laughs> My f Look, man, the most useful thing in anything is the samurai with Giltos from Final Fantasy V. <laughs> the most OP uh, job in the world. Only if you got a lot of money, though. Yeah, true. But what would I like to be in real life? I don't want to deal with the, the hardship of the samurai class, okay? I want to deal with the, the all-around power of the red mage. Okay. Truly great attack. Maybe not as strong as the warrior, but still great. You can heal yourself. Heal others. Got some nice white mage powers there. And, of course, good old damage powers. All right. And elemental stuff. Black mage magic. It's so... It's such a useful class. Or at least it would be in any real sense. <laughs> um, you have to go with red mage. I mean, you don't have to have a party if you got re if you're red mage, basically. Yeah. Well, you'd be master of nothing, but you'd know how to do a little bit of everything. So. Yeah. In a real setting, you should be. Would able you to rather be pretty good at most things or master of one thing? Well, I. Well, in our world, I could probably do better as a master of one thing, as opposed to good at a bunch of things. Although that would make my. Yeah, you know, I'd be more flexible for work and stuff like that. I, sure, I, yeah. I could see them both being good. I still choose Black Mage. 
All right, so we have another one here from uh, Gammon Stark. He's a mother of a on the phone. Mother! He says, what is your favorite bad ending from a video game? I just got the Zillia 2's bad ending, and it was fabulously screwed up in that the secret to desire kind of way. He'd rather not spoil it. Uh, I was going to ask about FF bad endings, but can't recall any besides Game Over at the moment. Well, I think FF 10 2 has a couple different endings. Um, yeah. One where Titus does not return and one where Titus does return. I believe. Yeah, hundred yeah. percenting it. Yeah, um, but I actually don't know that much about FF10 too. I just know that I played the first few hours and I really hated it, and I dread having to play it for this uh, playthrough. Yeah. Um, a game whose ending really pissed me off at the time was Halo 2's ending, uh, which of course is this: you you go through this incredible journey, and then all the enemies are down below and the guy's like let's finish the fight and then the freaking game ends you don't actually finish the freaking fight i guess it's just like wait till halo 3 <laughs> yeah and that's what the what that's what the end of halo 2 does so uh, that was really annoying and i really hated that um that's really the <laughs> but i hated it and loved it at the same time cuz like a cliffhanger is kind of fun and so I don't know, like the idea of how pissed off I was and how I kind of like laugh at that. I don't know. So I'd call that my favorite bad ending. Okay. Yeah. Huh, favorite bad ending. Yeah. I don't even know. Well, do you like Final Fantasy IV's ending? That's pretty bad. All right. Yeah, I can <laughs> go with that. Final Fantasy IV's ending. It's your favorite one to bash in the it whole is. series. That's for damn sure. Well, I mean, it's got such critical acclaim and then the ending where the uh, just... All the sacrifices and all those emotional moments are just flushed. And then the wedding scene and all the dancing. It just, I don't know, it just felt wrong. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that. I mean, the other games I've played, I mean, Metal um, Gear Solid 3's ending is fantastic. You know, the Resident Evil 4's ending is fine. Resident Evil 5's ending is even fine. You don't really finish bad games, do you? No, I don't. Neither do I. Like, maybe the... I don't know, Black Hawk Down Delta Force game on PS2, but I don't even remember why it was bad. I just Well, I remember why it was bad. It was bad because I'd turn a corner and a guy would already be shooting me, and I'd have, like, no health, and the autosave would put me at the spot where I had no health, and it was just relentless. But yeah, the ending was okay. I mean, I was done. That was nice. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what you mean by bad ending, so if you want to repost well, the, the post with a little bit more detail, I mean... We there are games that it. have officially endings that people hate, like Mass Effect 3. Not that I've played the Mass Effect series, but there was... I've heard things, yeah. Yeah, there were people that like wanted to sue the company, and they were freaking out over the ending of the series, and I'm but, like... But it, does Gamma Stark mean like a game that allows you to have both a good and a bad ending? Oh, that's a good point. Because that's another way you could read that question. Yeah, if we did it wrong, let us know and we'll <laughs> re-answer it. I don't have an answer for the other one, frankly, because uh, I haven't played too many of those games. All but right. we will play a couple, I know, later on in this, oh, yeah. uh, in this series. We will, for sure. All right. What's this next one here? This uh, one's from Shinru, who's a sick mother on our forums. Um, just curious uh, what you think of the potential of the series to reach a 100th anniversary or something Ooh. so what is that <laughs> 2000 2086 87 87 2087 we'll probably be dead <laughs> probably. extremely old <laughs> probably be dead do you think square enix will eventually retire the ff main series around ff 30 or something uh or do you see it continuing for a very long time um I don't know. I think it's going to continue until they either go bankrupt and no one wants to produce any more Final Fantasies or... <sighs> That's the only way it would continue. Or it would, <laughs> it would I don't stop? know. I don't know if it would stop. Like, are they going to have the grace to just end it at any point? If, if it doesn't... a large Final Fantasy game comes out and it fails... You think it'll be over? Final Fantasy will be over for a few years. And yeah. then they will bring it back. Some other company probably It'll, if they it, tank. It, yeah, if Square Enix itself tanks and another company takes them over, I mean, it'll probably be put on the back burner. I don't think it'll ever go away 
completely. No, there'll always be something, but yeah, I don't know. And I, the games, the games are a little different than let's say a movie or something. You can't reboot Final Fantasy and just call Final Fantasy like Final Fantasy One and then do something completely different because they've been remaking these games this entire time. True. So you would have to continue and say Final Fantasy sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Um, but you know the gap in between those. Yeah, they they could be big. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I I don't know. I can see it going on for a while until basically it's insoluble. It, like no one wants to pay for it, kind of a thing. But the series, I mean, the games are disconnected to a point where the stories. It's not like when they announced Gears of War four, and I was like, oh my god, it's the thing ended. It's not like that. It's just it's a continue. It's a continually new atmosphere new characters so i could see it going on for a while but what's another series of media that japanese have put out in the last uh, century that has never ended oh wait there's a shitload most yeah. especially i'm thinking right now godzilla which uh it doesn't matter how many years go by even if there's like a 15 year gap godzilla always returns yeah so you could see it. There's just, always a new Godzilla movie on the horizon, whether or not it's a horizon that's far away or it's close. Yeah, fair enough. But I mean, a gaming company is a little different, though. No, that IP won't go away. Some other thing will buy it up. Yeah, it won't dissolve. You don't think it'll? Uh, you don't think Final Fantasy will ever go away then? <sighs> not unless it gets really unpopular for a long stretch. Yeah, that's probably the only thing. In which case, it'll be brought back 30 years later. (laughs) All right, all right. All right, so we have another question here. This one's from Gammon Stark again. Oh, yeah. And this one's interesting. Uh, Have you ever discussed or toyed with the idea (laughs) of doing a UFF meetup? I don't mean creating an event to just meet up with other listeners, but advertising your attendance at another event as an opportunity to meet with other attendees who happen to be listeners. So, wait, so, oh, okay, I know what he's saying. You mentioned going to a con in Vegas. If you were to do something like that again, listeners could probably join you. We mentioned doing a con in Vegas. We went. Yeah, we did. We We had a whole episode. (laughs) On the Happy Jack RPG podcast, we started going to a local gaming convention and running or playing games with the listeners. Oh, that's cool. On Saturday night... A live podcast. Oh, I assume you meant live. A live podcast was recorded. I doubt I am even considered part of the podcast anymore, but I know they still do this a few times a year. Happy Jack RPG podcast. I'm going to have to check that. Yeah, another RPG podcast, uh, Fear the Boot, started a wing night. No matter where you were, they encourage you to go hang out with the other listeners in your area and eat some chicken wings. That sounds cool. Huh. Uh, it morphed into coming to the podcaster's home from out of town and eating hometown. wings one night. A hometown. <laughs> you having trouble? You can't read that. Yeah, can it's you? too far away. All right. And uh, uh, gaming the next night. It grew into an international convention called Fear the Con, which just happened for the eighth time last June. Hmm. So have you ever entertained the idea? If yay or nay, could you guys discuss it for a bit? <laughs> Of course. Of course we'll discuss it for a bit. And I think we have kind of mentioned it before, like you were saying, Game and Stark, about going to a con and maybe meeting up with some people. Um, you know, we don't really... We're, we're still too poor. We don't really have the money to, like, rent out a, a place where we can all meet up during a convention or something. Yeah, like I that. mean, you guys come to my place, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's impossible. However, <laughs> uh, if there is another Final Fantasy XIV um, thing, we'll definitely be there. And... Um, I don't know. We'll we'll keep a lookout for gaming conventions in Vegas or in Los Angeles that uh, that look like it's something me and Schweiss can afford to go to and maybe meet up with with you guys. I mean, our biggest, our the largest amount of listeners we have is in California, so if we stay near the West Coast, that's going to be the best place to come see us. And we wouldn't have a thing for us. Like I don't think we would create something, but we'd go to that convention. And hopefully, a few of you guys would see us there. Yeah, it'd be nice to hang out and yeah. uh, you know get wasted who knows <laughs> <laughs> that's what i saw some people on the uh on the forum saying do what i do best mm-hmm. so uh schweiss shall we uh shall we go from the questions from us to you you gotta still be you on mean, the forum go to, to the questions from us to you 
Yeah. Oh, are you talking about talking about last times? Oh, yeah, I mean talking about last times question from us to you. Well, damn. You remember that? Uh, I remember about it, I mean. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus, give me a sec. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to it. I just stopped the recorder to let you... Why did you click out of that? I, I forgot said those about words. I was like ready because I saw you were going to and I was trying to stop you. Let's uh, talk to some of the people on the chat, shall we? Yeah, it's probably a good time for that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's an old copy of Rad Racer. Oh, nice. Yes, we are in Provo. Let's see. Oh, these are mostly... Rad Racer was his jam after pole position. Other than all the people coming back to life, it wasn't that bad. No, I, I love Final Fantasy IV. Yeah, it was great until the end. <laughs> the, the wedding scene is kind of... It's long it's campy. and clunky, and then I don't think it belongs. That's okay, though. It's definitely the starting point of the awesome. I will not deny that. Ah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Jesus. You're just off your game tonight, aren't you? Well, I'm just fucking blind. My eyesight is just given away. Given away okay. to well, nothing. I'll, I'll read these then. But you do have to scroll. Damn. What do you want in the new website? It's the third one down. There you go. All right. I've been on on everything else. You ready? You ready to play the jingle? Yeah, give me a sec. Okay. Oh, I love that ending note. All right, so uh, last week we talked about uh, doing a new website, and we asked uh, what we thought should be on it. We got a couple of responses here. Gamma Stark suggests that on our new website we put pictures of the food we have created. Or if it's too late, pictures of what uh, you turn the food into. Yeah, you don't want to see that. Which is disgusting, Gamut Stark. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so video <laughs> versions of the podcast or links to the YouTube page, uh, pages for each game in one tab, a page for each podcast, a soundtrack page for your themes, uh, and any other music we use in the show. Some of that we already have, but that's okay. Uh, well, I think... It- we do put the links in the description of the episodes for each of the remixes that we use. At least we, at least I keep them up on the tab for you. And you're Not s- all the time. You're supposed to copy and paste <laughs> them. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes the tabs are gone, uh, and I'm like, what the fuck? Which one did we use? <laughs> you just look in the history for a second. No. You see the last YouTube video played. Um, Damn it, Windows. <laughs> I mean could see what I last put in the search bar on YouTube, which was probably FF blank remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. So, schnitzel time <laughs> says, community created tips and facts, somewhat similar to tactics you might need. Boss battle walkthroughs and stuff like that would be cool. All out walkthroughs would be a bit much since most of us have played these already. The game script was a good idea. Maybe a brief summary of what each podcast episode is about. That should be on there. Already, listener created, since that would be a hassle for you guys. Oh, I mean, uh, go ahead. <laughs> a ranking system within UFF forums. For example, every game that you have listed, the forum members would rate 0 to 10 as long as they played it. I like this idea. This is a great idea. That way, new and old listeners would get a general idea of the overall view of each game by the majority of the forum. Say he goes onto the new site, clicks on Crisis Core, and then sees a composite score of 8.2 out of 10. I think that would be a really cool idea, and uh, yeah, so do I. I think uh, I think a rating system for each game would be really cool, and I think that maybe having a section of the forum where kind of where everybody votes their ranking of the Final Fantasies, and we see cool. the Ultima Final Fantasy official ranking against kind of the user ranking. Yeah, probably be close, but I think that'd be cool. Uh, the Doors ninety three said, "I'm hoping our forum ranks that we've worked so hard to achieve are carried over." Nope. Probably not. Maybe, yeah, no, not even the ranks. There'd be no way. There'd, Everyone would have to nothing. start. It's going to be a brand new forum. New it's slate be a brand for you guys. New day. Yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, Shinru agrees with the forum add-on, and maybe it'd be nice to have an area that links the Twitch stream and YouTube videos, and maybe a live feed to their Twitter on the side that gets updated whenever someone tweets. We do that already. Yeah, that, that especially the live feed one. That one's yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, the There is a Twitch stream there's but a I twitch think, button there's a twitch button but i want to i wonder if we can go in there and i saw limit break radio's website and maybe we should ask him about this there is a section where it says whether or not they're online that's what and i want to do what widget they have to do that because that would be awesome because then someone would be checking out the site for the first time and be like oh caleb's playing let's go check it out blah blah, blah. yeah kind of a thing so that yeah. we can definitely look into yeah uh so, so yeah that's essentially what you guys answered and those are all great suggestions right. and so we'll I- uh I got a new question for you guys this week. Oh. Um, my question is, we got all these new spin-off games for Final Fantasy coming out in the next year or so, and we're seeing, of course, all these new trailers for them. And I got I to gotta ask you, which Final Fantasy game are you most excited for in 2016? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll put a little poll up on the, on the thing, and you guys can answer that, and I, I'd be happy to hear. Uh, Excellent. So, what uh, you got? I do we have any iTunes reviews? I am positive <laughs> we do not. Oh, what do we do when we don't have any iTunes reviews <sighs> now, Schweiss? I don't know. I oh, mean, what are we gonna do? We can't even play the jingle if we have no iTunes reviews. No, we can't. Oh, I'm so disappointed. How to express this disappointment? Oh, I have an idea. I got this. This is what happens. Yeah, this is you. waited to play that thing <laughs> well we've waited to play that thing but it will get extremely annoying <laughs> yeah. if we don't have a new itunes review every week yeah and i really hope that we don't have some obscure review that i did not see <laughs> but i'm fairly positive as of yesterday we didn't have any so All that right. is what happens yep that's what happens <laughs> from now on we don't get an itunes review from one of you guys who refuses to download iTunes? Yeah, choke about choke. That's what happens. Yeah, if you do, if at the very least give us a review on some other podcatcher source and give us the link to it. Yeah, I mean yeah. we'll. Uh, I think we'll Podbay those. sends it. 
Or Podbay has like a conglomerate of all of the reviews. Well, yeah, reviews, I, we have a thing that that'll send us all the reviews for all the international stuff once a month. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll that'll tell us. Yeah, but um, but that doesn't include Stitcher. Oh, it's just iTunes. Ah, Stitcher is. Uh, well. You know, I hate Stitcher, so if you're on Stitcher, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's like messed up versions of our show, yeah. so please. Yeah, they like to cut our quality in half, so screw them. That's what I don't like about them. <laughs> yeah. And, so, uh, and sometimes they'll only take 10 minutes of an episode. There are some episodes on, on on Stitcher that I guess were deemed too long, and they only kept 10 minutes of it. That's ridiculous. So fuck Sti- Stitcher. Stitcher. Don't use Stitcher. If you got an Android and you're looking for a good podcatcher app, use Podcast Addict or Podcast Republic. Fuck Stitcher. Okay? Fuck them. And if you got an if you got an iPhone or anything Mac, just just use the i i just use the the podcast app. Yeah, it's a great app. It's the best out, app out there for podcasts, really. Anyway, and give us a give us a review, please. Yeah. yeah. And of course, in addition to the review, follow us on uh, <laughs> all of the media. Sites. Final plugs: yes. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, please. Uh, Twitch and uh, our website, of course, Ultimate Final Fantasy. Yeah, Com. and if you guys like us and not just the uh, the Final Fantasy show, check out Getting Fat with Caleb and Joe. That's yeah. Super rhymy right there. And, uh, of course, Super Sexy Swing and Fan Fiction with Jake and I now instead of Joe. And, uh, oh. Yeah. You just dropped a bomb on those people that couldn't handle the last nine episodes of yeah. Super Sexy. Yeah, Joe retired, so. I have retired from Super Sexy Swing and Fan Fiction. A full uh, explanation is on that show. Yep, so check that out if you haven't already. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. You got any final words, Joe? Oh, well, what do they need to enjoy? I think I think they need to enjoy the grind. Oh, the grind, huh? Yeah. It's that thing you do when you don't sell all your accessories. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. This has been another production, production of Ultimate Final, Final Fantasy, the Ultimate Final, Final Fantasy Podcast. The show was produced by Justin Gaulier and Gaines Twice, twice with, with music and editing by Justin Gaulier. Parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at UltimateFinalFantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at Podcast, as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show. And we look forward to the next episode of Ultimate Final Fantasy, the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast. One of these days, I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna do that one bassist that we watch on YouTube. The guy that's like, "Whoa!" <laughs> just have another guitar in here and just go solo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, I can't play guitar, so it'll sound like shit. But <laughs> it'll sound like my drumming in that last. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad the Twitch people can't really hear that without like some bullshit echo. Uh, I'm they, sorry, guys. They were able to hear it. They could tell it was Black Sabbath, oh, nice. which is good. I mean. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. <sighs> Not a whole lot, guys. Mother of God. <laughs> was that for the song? <laughs> yeah, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> RSS uh, Radio 7, huh? Well, Roxo's got like a shitload of podcasts, so I take his word as well. He's talking the other day about his eight Final Fantasy podcasts, and I was like, Well, oh. I've never seen RSS Radio... I only use my phone. I mean, that could be a computer one, but I don't really know anything about it. Tell me, Roxo, is it great? Did you bring up my theory about why the game was so linear? Uh, we didn't on 13. Um, send that to me on the forums, though, and we'll we'll go over it on the review episode. Or on Twitch. Or, or, on Twitch. or Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Not on Twitch. On Twitter? Oh, yeah, send it to us on Twitter. We're going to go over it on Twitter. If we have some kind of visual record of it it's easier for us to be like oh yeah that yeah i saw it but it was yeah. pretty cool pretty cool idea it's an app on iphone yeah but why oh, uh, you got the podcast app on the iphone it's a beautiful app 
it's so streamlined. The way you find podcasts and episodes and what things are in the episodes are so much better than the other podcasters out there. I mean, Podcast Addict is just a clusterfuck when you put any search term in there. And uh, Podcast Republic, of course, you can only search podcast names. You can't search, uh, like the names of people that they might be interviewing or something like that. Of course, I don't know RSS Radio. Maybe you can add other shit that I don't know about. But I have no idea. I need to start listening. I'd be surprised if it's better than Podcast uh, Addict. I'm or sorry, or yeah. better than the... Not not better than Podcast Addict. You could definitely be better than Podcast Addict. But uh, as far as the, the, I, the, the, the Apple Podcast app, I mean, it's, it's second to none. I'd be very surprised if there was a better app out there. Yeah. Well, I need to start listening to some stuff because I'm running out of music. It's happening? It's happening, yeah. I can only do so much with the same songs. And you, can you use your phone at work? No. You can't have a Bluetooth on? and mm. That sucks. I can. So you have to be online listening to podcasts. Yeah, I've got to use online that stuff. Annoying. You know, I listen to some of Retro RPG, but I don't know. After a little while... There's a few episodes that are great, and then some that are not so great. Yeah, or it's like 30 minutes of just BSing in the beginning. I'm like, jeez, dude. <laughs> like, you guys are kind of funny, but uh, God, it's rough. So I don't know. I, I got to find a show that interests me. Maybe I'll check out that history one that Cameron's been listening to. Oh, uh, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History? Yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah, His could, voice is kind of anywhere. conspiracy theorist. Sounding, He's not. But He's really not. <laughs> I'm sure he's Thank not. Thank God just, he's not. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't want Cameron. He's got a weak mind. You Cameron's influ- influenced he's be... easily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, Illuminati. <laughs> just fucking shut up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'll check out some shows, and I won't have an opinion on the apps, because I'll be using a web-based podcast we deal. Gotta, you got to find a web-based uh, web-based a web-based uh, podcast. Yeah, or just find a show program. and go to their website or something. Well, I, I got a list of shows for you. Just look on the forum. We all talked about the podcast we love. All right, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, yeah, there's some good 14 podcasts out there. Thankfully, not really our competition. Yeah, they're just there. We're friends. We're friends for now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you talk to Aniro? Yeah, he said, uh, he said we're going to schedule... He said he's going to see what his schedule looks like next week. Okay. And I said Wednesday. So. Okay. Because you said right. Wednesday's fine. Wednesday is fine. Then that'll be the day. The later on Wednesday, the better. But no, I'll, I'll talk to him when we get something. Actually, wait. Let me think about my Wednesday real quick. Should be fine. If anything, I'll have to skip photography, which is the easiest class to skip. Yeah. We that agree. will be a cool show. I'm excited to to interview a Nero. Yeah. He, he agreed to an interview. We're just trying to freaking set up a time. Yeah. It's and kinda... we also have an interview with uh, a tentative interview uh, with uh, Pixel from our forum, who is a member of uh, or one of the website guys, Livestream.net. Yeah, Livestream. So we'd like to talk to him someday after a Nero. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. And then of course the. You know, the donors who want to be part of an episode would be cool. Because I thought yeah. that uh, Mecha Messiah one was a lot of fun. Mecha Messiah one episode. was a lot of fun. I thought Final Fantasy XI's Part 3 and 4, which I know a lot of you guys have skipped. Um, we can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Final Fantasy XI Part 3 and 4 are not as popular as uh, some of the other stuff, at least with download rates. But they are great episodes. Please check them out. Yeah, and they're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, Shinru, um, Bandrum. Bandrum and Artiforian were awesome to have on. So check them out. And uh, I think it's time for us to end. All right. Well, we'll see you guys in a week and a few.